Hi there everyone and welcome to this video. Today we are going to talk through uh, approvals within Business Central again. Um, so we do have um, some of the videos on approvals, uh, but this particular video is going to focus on um, two particular um, methodologies for um, approvals within Business Central. Um, so let's get into it. Um, I'll just show you which two areas we're going to focus on today. Um, so let me go and search for a page here called Workflows. And what I'm going to do is just go into a pre-prepared purchase order approval workflow here. So as I mentioned, we've got um, another video here that talks through some of the um, other approval approaches here. So I'm not going to go through how the workflows work again because I've done that on another video. I will paste the link to that video in this one um, in the description just so you can see that for, for reference. But um, what we're going to go into today is the, the then response and we're going to change the um, approver limit type here. OK, so we've done some of these in other videos, but for today we're going to go with first qualified approver and then uh, we'll go with approver chain. OK. Um, so these are two of the different um, approval limit types that we can use. Um, and what I've got it set to right now is first qualified approver. OK, so um, what I'm going to do is let me just open approval user setup here. And this is going to show us the approval user setup um, for this particular company. Um, and I am currently logged in as the admin user. And you can see that my approver ID is Ali B. OK, so we then have the user ID Ali B, whose approver is Alicia. Um, but Ali has sufficient approval rights up until 100 GBP. OK, so anything above that and in this particular environment, it will go to Alicia because Alicia has unlimited purchase approval. So sort of the hierarchy goes uh, for my user when I'm inputting POs. Um, I'm going to go um, for approval if the value of the PO is under 100 or up to 100. Sorry, I'm going to go to Ali. If it's above 100, then it will go to Alicia. OK, and what we'd expect is because in the approver limit type, I selected first qualified approver for this particular example, what we'd expect is a single approval entry, which will go either to Ali B or Alicia T, dependent on is it under the value that we've got set for Ali um, or Alicia. OK, so what I'll go ahead and do now is let me go and raise a purchase order. So I'll go purchasing purchase orders and let me raise a new PO. I'll select a vendor and I'm just going to put on a single line and let's put in a quantity of one. OK, so we see the direct unit cost here has come through as 50660. So what I'm going to do is just change that to 99 GBP. OK, so. I'm going to go ahead now and say request approval and send approval request. And what it tells me is an approval request has been sent. And if I come up to the top here on order, I can go into approvals here and I can review my open approval entries for this PO. So I've got two lines here. You can see the first one, I think it's just there because it's the way that BC works. But the second one here is um, the one that we're going to focus on. So the sender ID is admin and the approver ID is Ali B. OK, now, why is that the case? Well, it's because the amount of this PO is 99. And if I just go back to our approval user setup, remember here we set up Ali B with a purchase amount approval limit of 100. OK, so that's the reason why when I'm sending this PO for approval, my approver is Ali B and Ali B has appropriate rights to approve up to 
the value of 100 GBP on purchase documents. OK, so I won't go into um, the uh, login for Alibi and show you. I mean, just take for granted that the uh, the request entry will be there for Ali to go in and either approve or reject. But what I will do is let me go ahead and say cancel approval request on this now. And I'm going to go in and change the value of this PO to be greater than the value of 100. OK, so it's now more than 100. Basically, it's more than the amount that Ali has the rights to approve. OK, so let me go ahead now and say send approval request again. And I get a message saying an approval request has been sent. Let me say OK and I'll go order and approvals. And what we're focusing on this time is these two entries because we've got two cancelled entries. Um, but over here, look, the final entry, which is still open, you can see that the sender ID is admin and the approver ID now is Alicia T. OK, and that's because, look, the value of the line that we're sending for approval is 101. And if I go back just so we can review to the approval user setup, we see that Ali only has the approval limit of, uh, of 100. And even though Ali is my approver, she doesn't have sufficient rights to uh, approve the document that I'm sending for approval. So it's going to go up the hierarchy to Ali's approver, who is Alicia. And as we know, Alicia has unlimited purchase approvals. OK, so that's why we're seeing this time the approval go to Alicia. And bear in mind, it's only gone to Alicia. It hasn't gone to Ali B and Alicia because we have first qualified approver set as the approver type. OK, so coming back to my workflow. It didn't go to Ali and Alicia together because we've got the approver type, uh, approval limit type, sorry, set to first qualified approver. OK, so in this case, it only goes to the person that needs to approve it. OK, so so what we'll do now is let's just change that to approver chain and I'll just show you how that works. So let me go in and set this to approver chain and say OK and enable again. OK, so just to review there, that was quick. What I did was I just changed the approver limit type to approver chain. OK, so now let's see what happens when I send a PO for approval. OK, so I'm going to raise another PO. And let me go in and add a vendor. Let me add a product. And again, I'm going to change the value of the PO to under 100. OK, so remember the uh, approval limit for Ali is 100. OK, so let me go request approval and send approval request. OK, so an approval request has been sent. And let me go and review those approval requests. And you can see I've got an entry in here from admin to Ali B for the value of 99. OK, so probably guess what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go cancel and I'm going to go over 100 this time. So we've got 101 and let's go send approval request again and OK. And if I go into order and approvals here, what we can see is here is that I've got sequence number one. And as we say, that one is always there. It's the way that BC creates the records. Then I've got sequence number two, which is open and it's admin sending the approval request to Ali B for the value of 101. And then I've got another record in here this time, which is not open. It's created and this is where the approval is going to go from admin to Alicia T. And that's because it's above the 100 approval limit that Ali B has. OK, so basically it's going to go from myself, the admin user to Ali B to begin with. And once Ali approves, it's then going to go up to Alicia for Alicia to approve as well. OK, so 
the reason why it's working this way this time is if I go back to my workflow and if I go into the then response over here we've set the approver limit type to approver chain and that's why this time the approver requests went through the approver chain it went from admin to Ali B and then Ali B to Alicia T for her to approve so as I said guys on this video I'm not going to show you how to go ahead and actually approve those records uh, we have done that in another video so I'll just copy the link from the video where we did that into this one so you can have a look at that if you need to review how we go about doing that um, but that is everything I wanted to show you on uh, on this video uh, I hope you found it useful thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one